All right, hello and welcome. Hopefully you guys can hear me. This is Ben with FarmQA. Um, we will be doing our webinar series and today we'll be covering our grower portal and essentially walking through the experience uh, from a grower's perspective if they were to be using FarmQA. Uh, underneath you is potentially an agronomist or as a, a customer of FarmQA. So hopefully everybody can hear me. If not, post in the chat and we'll work through any sort of technical issues. But Without further ado, we've got the, like I said, the Deliver Better Grower Service is what we'll be talking about today. My name is Ben Munson. I'm the Senior Technology Specialist with FarmQA. As far as what we'll be covering, I'm going to walk through how a grower can enter information into the FarmQA platform. And as far as what data, we're mostly going to be talking about inputting plant dates, harvest dates, varieties, managing field boundaries but then also walking through an experience from a grower's perspective on what data they can see that may have been entered by the agronomist. So that might be things like scouting reports, recommendations, and then also be rolling that up into kind of year-end reports on their behalf. And so that will be the, the topic for today, and I will spend most of my time in a live demo walking through exactly what a grower would see. And so please be putting your comments in the chat throughout this webinar, and I will be addressing those at the end, and I would love to hear from you and go through your specific questions. But again, the summary here is we're hoping to show you, or showcase what a grower can do within FarmQA when they get a login. With that said, I will jump over into a live demo account. And so what you're looking at now, we call this FarmQA controller. This is our, our web view, our web platform. And what I want to point out first is, is how you can actually set up a grower account. And so the perspective I'm walking through now would be, is let's say you're a FarmQA customer and you have growers that are your clients working underneath you that may want to subscribe to the program, you can set them up on their behalf. And so the process of doing that will be to click on the settings tab on the left hand side. Now within the settings page, you can see that there is a tab for users. And so this is the interface you'd use to set up growers within your FarmQA account. As you can see, there's a list of your existing growers or customers. And if you wanna add a new user, that's what the, the plus button represents in the bottom left. So if I click on that, we now require a, an email address and I will put in an address here, followed by a name and then a password. And you can see our password requirements are listed below. So let's just say I, I put in a password. Now the, the key piece to this is the role and organization. So when you're setting up a user within FarmQA, you can restrict what they can do within the program. And so when you select on the roles, you can see a list of the roles that we have within our program. We have a support document that I'll walk through that, that goes step by step into these roles. For the sake of this conversation, we're going to focus in on the grower role and the viewer and explain the difference. So to start this conversation out, the viewer is a free view only account and you can set up unlimited free view users within FarmQA within your account. Now, if you have some producers that want to start using this program, perhaps you want us to help with kind of that agronomist grower relationship and the conversation or the data flow between the two parties then you can elevate to a grower and then they can start entering information on their behalf which would then be visible to their agronomist and so those are the two roles we're going to focus in on and the grower is a paid level account but then again there's more that they can do within the program with that level of access so in my case i will select grower now the, the next key piece here is when you're setting up these accounts you want to make sure that you're granting access not only at the right role but at the right level within your organizational tree. So what you're seeing here is, is within my demo account, I've got a branch that represents my Minnesota farm and my North Dakota farm. Within those, I have different scenarios that I have mocked up, but essentially these would be if you work with a grower who may have different divisions within their operation, they may fall as separate folders, if you will, underneath those operations. So in my case, if I want to set up Minnesota Farms and I just added a new user, I would select their branch. But in this case, I want to make sure to select apply permissions to all levels below. 
And what that will do is that if I associate a user just at this Minnesota farm level, they would also be able to see this folder for Ben and Brett, which may be their different divisions of their operation. So this grants the user that I'm creating access to both these branches along with this hierarchy. From here, we can click Save. Key thing to note is we don't auto send an email to these users. So you would need to take on the onus of emailing them the credentials as far as the username and password. A key thing to note is that they can reset their passwords on the login screen. So if you're concerned about that, just ensure them that they, once they get to the login screen, there's a reset pa password option, and that would trigger the process where they could set up a unique ID for them. Okay, so that's the process. Another thing to note within this page is that you can toggle between, if you want a refresher on who has access to what, you can be seeing it from this user by user view, or you can also see it by organization. So clicking on this organization tab, then clicking on this Minnesota farm branch, if I toggle over to security, this is a view where I can see everybody who has access to this node or this folder and at what role that is, whether it's a viewer, grower, agronomist, et cetera. And within here, you can change those roles from the screen as well. So uh, between the user and the organization tab, there's some crossover in the ability to edit roles. Um, and it's just a matter of if you want to see holistically who's in a folder versus user by user, what they get access to. So that's the setup process. We do, again, have support documents walking through this as well, which we'll point out. But one more thing that I want to show that you can define access to at a granular level before we jump over to the growers experience is actually going to be in the metrics. And so if you have subscribed to analytics as a premium feature, one thing that you can do at, within the metric designer view tab is that let's say you've created a view that you want a grower to see. So what I've done here, this is an aphid severity, we call it a field average map where it's painting the, the fill color per field based on scouting information. The reason I'm bringing this up is that when you go to save this, we have a couple options here. The first is let other users view this view this particular um, metric, or you can have it just be internal. So if this is something that as a, an agronomy team, you set up metrics that only you guys want to see internally, I would toggle that off. If this is a view that you want your growers to be able to experience and see on their own logins, you'd want to turn that toggle on. But in addition to that, you can also control who can see within your organizational tree this particular view. So an example being you may create specific views of, of sharing, and this is yield by variety. And what I'll do in this case, if I wanna select all, now all of my growers can see this view that I've created. Now keep in mind when I say this view, the view would be restricted down to just their fields, just their farms, but this is a, a bulk access granting process within this particular view. Another scenario would be if, if you just want, in my case, Minnesota farms to see this view, you can restrict that. And so keep that in mind is that that's another level of security access that you can give that would be specific to these metric views that you may have created, whether it's based on your soil fertility data, aphid pressure, things like that, anything that's coming through and flowing through into our analytic capability. Okay, now we will log out and log back in as if I was a grower. And so a grower account that I have set up I will log into this portal and the key thing to note is within this access, I am just a grower at the Minnesota farm branch. And so what that means is I no longer see North Dakota farms within this login. And it's because of my access level within the program. So that's the first thing to note is everything you see going forward is going to be restricted to just this one grower within my larger uh, farm QA account. But as far as what they can do or a grower can experience within this account is if they're a grower, what it boils down to is that they can assign crops to fields, assign varieties at field boundaries. They can actually fill in scouting forms. They can see all the scouting reports and recommendations submitted by agronomist. And so there's, there's quite a bit that they can do within the portal. And again, the grower is the paid account. If they want the free account, they would get the same experience that I'm showing here on my screen, but they wouldn't have any action buttons. 
meaning that they could still see the fields, they could click on the fields to see the details as far as weather conditions, the reports, they could pull in and view layers, but they wouldn't be able to take any of the actions up here as far as editing boundaries, planting, harvesting. Same thing goes for the scouting reports. They can see the reports, they can export them to PDF, but they wouldn't be able to submit or create their own scouting reports. And so that's really the, the biggest differentiator here is the viewing capability versus actually entering data into the program with that paid grower account. So that's more of a summary, but we'll start to walk through some of the functions that a grower can do to make this more clear within the program. So the first scenario I will talk through is, is if you're a grower and you just got a new field and you want to make that accessible to your agronomist, you can create that field within controller or our web view within this plus button. So within this experience, you can use a polygon tool you can actually upload boundaries on the left hand side. So if you had, let's say, an export out of John Deere as a shape file, you can drag and drop that into the left hand pane. Or you could actually just click on here and this would bring up a file viewer. Like you're seeing here where you could select your files. So that's a scenario where you could create the field, name it, save it, and that would be available and visible to your agronomist. If you add new acres, a few other things to note is that from a grower's perspective, you can also uh, just be assigning crops and varieties. And so what I have here is, let's say you're sitting down and doing a crop plan, an agronomist could be assigning crops, but then you could update or add, add to that. So what I'll actually do is I'll go into my 2022 season. And another good point here is that a grower can get access to all their previous growing seasons and toggle back between data. So think of that as a digital filing cabinet for keeping all of your previous year's scouting reports, recommendations, spray records, et cetera. But the point I was making is that, let's say this field, you guys had decided perhaps back in November that this is gonna be corn. Now that's changed. Me as the grower, I can edit this field in the top left. And then within this view, I can select what crop it is. So instead of corn, let's say it's gonna be soybeans, and then I can select what variety it is within the variety drop-down view. So now I assign that to soybeans. That's updated in the program. We're web-based, and so it's a real-time change from the agronomist perspective. They would see that as well. And so that's something that they can do. One caveat here is that as a grower, you would not be able to add to that variety list, meaning that when I was um, in this view, when I had the, the drop-down, and I, I showed my variety views or variety list, that would be specific to what the agronomist had created at the time. And so that would uh, be a differentiator there to note is that let's say of these six varieties, I don't see the one that I'm planting at that time. You would need to communicate that to an agronomist to add it to the, the master dropdown list. Continuing on, the other things that a grower could do is Again, from the view only experience, they'd be able to see these fields, but as a grower or paid account, that's where you get these the, the action bar to actually do your assignments. And this is the difference being here, if you, you as a user want to do things from a grid or a table view versus the map, this would be the experience that you would have with the big difference being of you can actually take actions within the program of, um, when it comes to assignments. Uh, in addition to that, just our basic functionality of being able to see the different data points, whether it's plant date, days after planted, uh, scouting dates, or if you want to see this in a rotational view, that would be available to the grower as well in the same fashion that I'm showing here. It's kind of simulating the grower's experience. And so this is available. The other thing to note is that the scouting report. So as a, an agronomist, you may be submitting these scouting reports. What the grower can see here, the list of reports, filter down to whatever time period that they have delineated. And they could also search by a particular field if they were interested in seeing reports for field 115, for example. What they can't do is, as an agronomist, you'd have access to your scouting templates or your forms. And within that, the grower cannot touch those forms. That's specific to the owner of the account. And so that, that's a big differentiator here. But then within the report itself, um, you note that they can thumb through, see the reports uh, week over week in this experience, 
from the digital view, they could see, click into the reports, see the pictures, see the notations, and be able to, to thumb through and consume data in this way. The same thing would go for advice. They can see the table view, click into recommendations, thumb through these with the up and down arrows to experience or, or see what needs to be done. And then on the recommendation side, you would have this completion view or column where they can see what has been sprayed, what hasn't, uh, and use that as essentially a to-do list within the program. The key thing, another key thing I should say between the viewer count and the grower count is that viewers cannot see analytics, but the paid growers can. And so that's a big differentiator from the growers experience is that as a paid user, they can come in and start to query your scouting data, your scouting or your soil data from our metric experience, meaning that this would be something a grower could sit down and say, show me any field that had high stock rot in the current growing season. That filters down the fields that triggered as having that, um, the high pick list option from a scouting report. And then they could look through what else was going on in those fields to help them make management decisions. So this is kind of general analytic functionality, but the key thing being here is that the viewer would not see this tab as a whole therefore not be able to see the analytic base data. Now, where I started this conversation was with the metric views. And so what you can see here is that as a, as a grower, I do not have the ability to create these views, to edit them, to delete them. I can simply view those. And so these would have to be created by my agronomist and or the manager of the account. And then I could simply thumb through these views and see what they had created with the, our interface here, and that would be their experience. And so, and if you recall back to my previous discussion where you'd have the granularity of maybe you had, you know, 30 or 40 different views created, but for this grower, you just restricted it or simplified it, if you will, down to just the views that you that they would find pertinent or that you as agronomist wanted to share with them. So this is the view that I'm showing here would be their experience. And then if you are familiar with the, the Farm QA portal, there is a, a metric tab where as an individual agronomist or an admin, you can adjust the color ramps, set the default um, numeric ranges on metrics, things like that. That is something the grower cannot do in the program. Okay, so moving on, another key piece to the grower experience would be the mobile application. So, I am currently logged in as a grower, actually the same user that I just showed within the web view. And so the first thing you'll note is that I'm only seeing the Minnesota farm fields. So we respect that filter, the, that access level throughout the program, including the mobile application, uh, where I don't see that the other growers. So there's the data privacy factor within the program. But now I see the boundaries. I see the color coding represents the crops that are assigned. What I can do within this view is that I've got the same experience as an agronomist here, whether I want to turn on my township section lines, use the program for navigation, or I can start to enter data myself. So if I click on this field 211, I can see the details of this field as far as what's planted, acreage, when it was last checked. And then I can click on this number six and I'd be able to see all the reports that my agronomist submitted on this field, or I can see when he last checked it. I could click on that field itself or that report and open it as a PDF. If you as a grower also wanted to scout in combination with your agronomist or share some records on saying, maybe you see it an issue and you want to push that to your agronomist and say, come look at this. You would be able to see with the, these blue circles say, I'm the scout, but let's say John was the grower and Ben is the agronomist you'd be able to see the combination of who submitted what reports within this view. And you can also filter that down to just my reports or all the reports if you wanted to differentiate that. Now, as far as data entry goes, <clears throat> what I can do here is, is if I want to add an observation, I can do that as a grower. And so this is the scenario of the, the grower scouts along with the agronomist and the sharing the records back and forth. So you can fill out the forms. Overall, the field looks good. And then I could submit this. But one thing to note is that from an agronomist perspective, you can 
sorry, as a grower's perspective, you can drop these GPS specific pins, and then those would be visible to the agronomist where they could come into the scouting application and they could actually walk up to this pin and check that spot. So a scenario for that or a scenario that we get asked a lot is as a grower, you walk out to a field, maybe you see a disease and you want to say, uh, agronomist A, is this white mold? You could then define that within a template, come into your disease template. I don't even know if I have white mold set up in this particular template, but let's just say it's a uh, leaf rust instead. You could say, I think this is leaf rust, come take a look, or you can just be more generic in the text to say, um, is this white mold? And then within a map notation, you could actually define that with either a pin or if you wanted to circle an area, you could do that with that um, with our map notations. And then when that was submitted, the grower would be able to see that delineated within the report. An additional thing that we have added recently, so if you're an existing Farm QA customer, this would be new to you. But what you can do is, I'll actually submit this and go to a different field. But if I come into this, let's just say the soybean field. Now, if I click, um, okay, no, that function isn't available. Let me, I'll circle back to that here at the end. I was gonna talk through defining insect trap locations or defining scouting pins to say, throughout the year, I'm gonna always check the same three spots. You can actually now drop GPS pins and then week over week be returning to those same virtual flags, if you will. And so I was, I'll talk through at the end how those can be set up. <clears throat> but an additional thing I wanted to talk through or a scenario, it's really the same function I just talked about. But let's say as a, an agronomist or as a maybe you're a, a retailer or co-op, you want information from the grower as far as what they did you can set up different forms for that grower to fill out. An interesting scenario would be we've, we've worked with edible soybean producers or processors. And so what you can do is have them fill out a harvest report or let's say a pre-harvest report. And so those could be different forms that you had created within your farm QA account. But then the, the grower's experience is they could then fill out this digital form and it would flow to you as the agronomist or as the edible bean processor and you would get these digital records. And so instead of this being a, a pen and paper report that gets put in a binder, this is now a log across all of your growers that has been filled out in this way. So you don't necessarily have to think of the growers, the grower entering data as being scouting. It can be any sort of data that you need captured within your organization. So I'll submit that as well. Now, another thing to note from the grower's perspective is that we just talked to the scenario of I clicked in the field, I did a scouting report, but more simplistically, what they can also do is if from the, the field, they are actually planting. And going back to the scenario of in November, the agronomist and, and you as a grower said that this was gonna be soybeans, but now that plan changed and you're sitting in the planter. What you can do from the mobile app now is you can actually come over here to change crop and now instead of soybeans, you're gonna say this is corn. And so I'll go over to corn and now we'll serve up the, the corn variety list, which I can now pick, set crop, and now that will update. And so if I do have to run a sync here, but then that will switch over to corn. We do auto sync. So now you can see that 231 turned yellow, click in and it's that pioneer variety I had selected. So I had to sync because that was a real time change I wanted to see within a couple of seconds. We do auto sync. So as the agronomist, if you would open up your app a couple of minutes later, you would see that this had changed to corn and be able to see that that is something that the grower had entered. Along the same workflow, that grower can also edit the field shape. So perhaps he split the field. What he can do here is you can manipulate this boundary and then save this change. So I will actually do that. And now you can see it's a field split. So it's west side and then they could add in a new boundary to represent the east side. So if I come back here, new field boundary, and let's just say I do the east side here. So draw that out. And they could call this the 231. 231 I think is the field I was on. And I could do east. I could fill out the crop. Let's say that was gonna be canola. And I could click add field. 
oops, I thought I was in the right one. So anyway, then you'd see that would be associated to that, um, the field split of saying now you have a 231 west and east, and those would be two different crops. And so that would be something that the grower could define as well. The other thing to talk about is if I click into the scouting tab, I would then be able to have this ledger of all the reports that both myself and the agronomist submitted. So actually this is a good example of, you can see the blue circle for Ben, that would be me as when I was logged in as my admin account. And this turquoise blue, that would be me logged in as my grower. So you'd have this experience of seeing who submitted what, and then through this filter icon, I could break it down to just my reports. So if I do that, now we'll see just those two versus seeing all the reports in whatever time period you want to have set here. From this view, you can multi-select and push it into a PDF or share this with a farmhand. You can do that through this PDF button. The other opportunity that you would have is that if you wanted to see the recommendations, so I click over to the advice. Now, Think of this as a to-do list as a grower. So your agronomist might be writing your recommendations. Now I can look through this advice tab and see all the recommendations for whatever time period you have set here. So let's just say last seven days. Well, that's a bad example. <laughs> I'll say last 30 days. There you go. So now you can see all the recommendations that are outstanding from my agronomist. Then from this view, I can actually mark these as completed. So if I'm the grower, I can say I did spray this field. You mark it as completed. This happened to be a batch recommendation. So it was one recommendation or the same chemical combination that was supposed to be applied on four different fields. I can now say I sprayed, let's just say I sprayed all those fields. You can select those, select the date, set a time. And then if I were to click com complete, this now flips over to green, meaning that it's submitted, completed. The agronomist can then see that with the completion date and time. And then we as farm QA also stamp in the temperature, wind speed, and direction at time of application. The other thing that I will point out here is if you complete, and let's say, let me find another batch recommendation. Let's say I partially complete this, meaning I sprayed two of the four fields today. I can mark that as complete, and then you get an in-progress sign here. So those are the three different uh, symbols we have when you're looking through essentially your to-do list as an applicator. So that are, those are all the things that a grower can do. One last thing to point out is we do have this, the concept of uh, map layers. And so from a grower's perspective, they can choose which of those map layers they wanna view. And so that's this interface where I, I'm choosing to sync down my soil texture layers. But the, the more practical scenario here to talk through would be if a grower wanted to share a variable rate map with a grower or a seeding map, you could upload that into your farm QA account and that automatically becomes available to the grower if you grant them access to do so. So now if I turn on my soil texture map, this is a grower experiencing this. They'd be able to see the, uh, the different zones for the soil texture or the variable rate map or the imagery, et cetera. And so map layers are available to growers, both in the web view and the mobile app. One thing to note is that that does also include imagery. So if you are a, a grower, or sorry, an agronomist or a farm QA customer, if you subscribe to get imagery, that will flow down to your growers accounts as well. And they could see that in real time in the field so that they could then navigate on top of those images or the variable rate maps and see where they are relative to different zones. So we do have people, let's say they, they have the variable rate planters, they're, they're actually planting in real time. They could pull up a variable rate seeding script and see where they're at in that and how, how things are following or tracking. So from that, um, the growers or the, I guess the last piece to kind of round this out uh, the webinar is that let's say both you as agronomist and the grower have been submitting data on fields throughout the growing season. What you can then get at a kind of a, a year end report level, let me go into a 2022 season here is that you can then click on a field and let me get one with the, some records on it. Okay, so I click on a field 115 and what I was hoping to point out here is this event log. So I'm still showing you the experience from a grower's perspective. And as I click on this 40, this is actually a log of everything that was captured on this field throughout the season. And so this is a, a demo field that I use a lot. So there's, there's quite a bit of information on this, but what you'd be able to see is who submitted the reports, 
So again, that would be a combination between the agronomist and the grower and who else is checking those fields. But then what I can do is I can filter this down to whatever data type I want. So if it's just a recommendation, now you can see all your spray records here. You can click in to a particular record and see what was sprayed. And then we do track optionally, if you want to do this in the program, your cost per spray. And then that's going to break it down to a cost per field, per acre, or per whatever unit type you have set up. But then the uh, the actual reporting side to that field journal is if let's say you um, head scouted for the whole year and you wanted to, to generate a report or record for a uh, kind of a year-end uh, record keeping let me find a field with more realistic events then what you can do is if i click on this event log there you go two recommendations two scouting reports i can export this to pdf and then this is going to be something I could print out, put in a binder if needed, or this is again, think of that as your digital file cabinet of saying, here's my, my log of everything I did in the 2021 season for the field, um, Munson Farm field I have up here. And it happens to be called demo one. But anyway, you'd see the scouting reports, the recommendations, and then at the bottom, you would get automatic product totals. So saying across that entire field, here's what we sprayed. So that would be um, kind of one of the last things if think about a year end recap from a grower's perspective is you'd have that log that's always going to be available to you in the system and you could see that broken down by year click into that and have that ledger available and then one thing that i did miss the first time i was walking through that the field details is the attachments so this would be something if you as an agronomist want to share a file with a grower you can simply click on attachments and think of this as a, a data repository. So this could be um, replace a Dropbox scenario where you could just drag and drop a file in here, whether it's Excel, it's a PDF, it's a verb rate script. That's now being stored per field per growing season and it would be accessible to the grower. So let's say uh, I drop that file in and I, I'm a grower. I can see I have one attachment on this field. I can click on it. And then if I select the attachment, it will download it. So again, it's just it's a file transfer concept here, and that can be worked between internal to an operation or shared between agronomist growers in the uh, in the system. So with that, hopefully that gives you an idea of what a grower can do in our portal. We are certainly hoping to expand out on this. We want to in the near future do a my John Deere integration, where some of this planting data is automatically transferred to farm QA as far as plant dates, varieties. Um, but then going beyond that, we are also hoping to tackle work orders. And that being if, let's say a grower wants an agronomist to check a field, they could generate that as a work order or vice versa. If there's a recommendation written, a work order could flow to the grower or the custom applicator to track something that needs to get sprayed or when it got sprayed. So with that said, this is that's the experience for the grower today. And the login itself, like I said, you can set that up. They can get access to your farm QA account. If you do go down, go down the road of setting up a customized portal, then when the grower logs in, they would see your logo. They would see your color schemes, your, your kind of your branding portfolio. You could set up within a white labeled version of farm QA. So that would be this screen that you get here. And then when they logged in, Again, it would strip their data down to just seeing whatever level of, of the operation you granted them access to. But again, it would be your colors, your logos, that experience for them. So everything that I had previously spoken about would apply to this branded portal. It's just the experience and the, the uh, branded view that the grower would get if you went that route. So that uh, takes up our time for the webinar, but hopefully there's some questions out there that I can help answer. There's you know, a lot of functionality that we offer. So if you have some specific questions on what a grower can or can't do within the system, please ask that now and I will pull up the, uh, the chat and I will be looking for any questions to be coming through. So if there's no questions, we feel free to adjourn. We will be talking next week. I should pull this up. We will be talking in two weeks, rather, on reporting options. So I do get questions frequently on 
the export options we have was PDF, Excel, and then what all the customizations are with that as far as if you want to tweak the, the header, the logos, the layouts, and what you can do within our program. I'll be talking about that in two weeks and going through some specific scenarios. So please tune back in April 26th. Uh, you can always refer back to our previous webinars that are on our website or our YouTube channel. And then we are open to suggestions on what you want us to talk about or walk through in future webinars. And you can email that to info at FarmQA. So with that said, that is all I have for scheduled content. But like I said, we will be taking questions and I would gladly walk through that with you. Thank you. I see that my fantastic team is telling me that April 26th is next week. So <laughs> that is, uh, will be coming up sooner than I expected. And we will be talking about the, the webinar I was talking about as far as the PDF options and the reporting that's available to you as a customer, particularly what I'm showing on the screen here, how we can turn those levers and dials to generate a PDF that might be of interest to you. So I will be talking about that next week on the 26th.